Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Rose here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our Sugar Season 1, Episode 3 Reaction and Review. Pour some sugar on me, everybody. How mm -hmm. how are we feeling a few episodes into this show? Is Colin Farrell working for you guys? Are you, are you liking the twists and the turns? Listen, so far, so good for me. I'm really enjoying the show quite a bit. However, we will say before yeah. we get too deep into this video there are some spoilers out there for this show that we have not seen yet yeah. all we know is that there's going to be lots of crazy twists coming up so there's going to be some crazy theories in this video yeah. uh, so buckle up have your tinfoil hats at the ready because the, <laughs> the, the theory i have is really out there it's a part of the fun. I think really there's a debate to be had about whether or not Apple kind of screwed the pooch here and sort of mm -hmm. letting people talk that there's some sort of big twist coming because yep. this isn't just some ordinary twist. Like these reviewers are talking like this is one of the biggest twists ever. And it's distracting to me now, to be honest, where I'm just sort of sitting back being like, okay, when's the twist going to come? When's the twist? I, I wish I didn't know that one was coming, but since we know there's no real avoiding it now. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me a lot of the curse in that way because early reviews came out for that as well. That yeah. was like, Oh, the ending is going to be so shocking. Never seen before. So I was like waiting the whole season for this crazy ending to come. And yeah, it came. So it's the same thing here where we don't know what this twist is. So if you guys do know and you have read the spoilers, don't leave them for us in the comments. Because yeah. part of the fun is guessing what's going on. Absolutely. And if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing here so far and want to support the channel further, Join our Patreon. We have a link in the description below where we have live streams over there yep. every week. We have exclusive polls. There's a lot of fun discussion going on over there. And thank you to those of you who have supported us on Patreon so far. We appreciate it so much. Absolutely. Okay, let's let's just jump into the crazy. Okay? All right. All right. Like, let's do it. Is John Sugar an alien? This is my tinfoil hat theory, <laughs> which on. we always need, like to I need think. more tinfoil I hat know. for this to communicate with our uh, denizens in orbit. Okay, listen, guys, please don't unsubscribe. But this is where I'm going with this. Okay, all right. I think that John Sugar and all the people that were at this party are all aliens that have been sent down to Earth that are being handled by Ruby. She's the handler. And this all sort of came about, again, we've heard that there's like some crazy twist. And I was like, okay, well, let's look at what we've sort of seen so far. We've seen them, you know, injecting himself. Like we've seen a lot of shots of outer space in the moon, like for some reason. So I was kind of like werewolves, vampires. Nah. Okay. This conversation that happened at the party with Ruby where, you know, John and Ruby were alone together and she was looking through his books. She was like, listen, there's a few issues that are going on here. You're talking in this book about how you feel about watching people at this crosswalk in Japan walking by. You, you're you having all these feelings about people that you're watching. Also, you're giving your opinions on this band called the UFO. <laughs> Stay with me, guys. I'm here. You're giving these opinions on this band called the UFOs and you're not being objective. And she basically said, listen, we're here to observe people not to participate in their lives. So I was just kind of like, okay, if you're observing people, that's sort of like what you always hear about, you know, little green men from outer space. They're here to observe us sort of thing. And yeah. Sugar even asked her, you know, have you heard from them? You know, what did they say? And she's like, oh, they're counting on us. So, I mean, aliens, it could be that they're all part of this sort of larger group of things. And that's sort of where we get into stallings and we'll get more into him and what's going on. That if the aliens have sent people down here, sent aliens down here as people, maybe the injection is to keep him in his human form, that maybe they have a group that they're like, okay, you guys are going to be the good humans where you're going to do all kinds of good things. You're going to 
help the homeless. You're going to help people find their loved ones. You can do all these really good things. And Ruby is handling that side of things. Then we have Vickers on the other side who is maybe handling the bad people who are down here doing stalling things, like the, the horrible things. And now these two worlds, these two different sort of projects are starting to collide with each other where Ruby has had to call Vickers and be like, listen, Ashurka's getting really close to your side of things. So like we got to find a way to separate them or our two projects are going to overlap. If you're still with me, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Is this theory absolutely weird? A hundred percent. It's out there, guys. I know it. I know it. But, I'm usually not that out there with my theories, but, you know, some big twist, you know, what's more crazy than aliens? Is it still possible? Yes. And uh, here's the thing. Okay, there's a couple of deals here. Little possible. There's... Obviously, something super weird going on on this show. Listen, he's always looking up at the sky. Yeah. He's looking up at the moon. Is he like longing for home? Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Sugar <laughs> phone home. Oh, by the way, also, what is the name John Sugar anyway? They've already talked about this on the show, but it does feel like something that it's aliens a made up name would be right? like, what do earthlings like? Sugar. <laughs> I'm <laughs> human up. adult man. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. No, okay. So. By the way, if we're doing, talking about outside references, did anybody else just think Hannibal when they brought up the are you here to observe or participate line right? that was being thrown in there? Okay, no. The, one of the other things that's very interesting, and this could go into the idea of John Sugar being an alien or where I'm sort of landing right now, which is the John Sugar, Victor Frankenstein's mm, monster sort okay. of deal that I'm going. Because either way. The perspective that this guy has about Los Angeles as a city is very strange. And you just listen to him talk about it in these first couple of episodes. He has this bizarre sort of romanticization of the city. And don't mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. A lot, a lot of people do. I mean, we're out here in California and there are people who love it. And we love California, too. But at the same time, John Sugar's in his car a lot. We don't see John Sugar just like being on the 405 for three hours or he's just sort of like, I don't know if I like LA anymore. But it, no, but it just feels like he speaks about it in a way that's almost foreign, that's almost very, very mm -hmm. strange. And sort of the way he talks about people and the way he experiences behavior, it feels almost that he's learned about a lot of this for the first time, as though he's almost been reborn in a way. And yeah. here's where... I'm going to get really, really weird. So, okay, we have all of these sort of visions that Sugar is having. Like, mm -hmm. if there's something wrong with his mind yeah. that's not really there. And yeah. where I'm kind of starting to go with this now is that what if John Sugar died? And what if there was a way to bring him back to life almost as this vessel that could be used by this organization to go and then do these things. And we know we have these yeah. visions about his sister and how he's constantly yeah. thinking about his sister. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of different ideas that could be in play with that. Like, what if this whole idea of his sister is just a part of an injected narrative, narrative, what is that, narrative, <laughs> by, you know, everybody who's going on here, by Ruby, to sort of give him a backstory. Yep. So he doesn't question his own existence, but at the same time still knows that there's something very, very odd that's off about him. He's having to yep. do these injections. So clearly something is being done so that he can still be whatever it is that he is. But it, it just does feel like there is this detachment of him versus a lot of the other people. And there's a reason why he's continually having to go back to Ruby, and in the end of this episode, like, we see her go into her mysterious room, open up the mysterious case, and she's just, like, typing away at something. This is not an ordinary boss here, folks, and, you know, maybe you're not as weird and out there as we are, but you know what? Welcome to Weird Town. Yeah, it's this is a very weird video, and it's all because they put out there that there's going to be yes. this crazy twist. So now we're down the hole. So make sure you leave your comments. There is no theory that's weirder than reincarnated from the dead <laughs> or aliens. So if, if you do have one that is weird than that, I would absolutely love to hear yep. it. Put it in the comments. So this is the other one that... 
I'm I'm really lukewarm on and I really hope they're not going in this direction because we've seen a lot of everybody's kind of playing with the stories of AI right now and with the yeah. whole like you're learning to feel and you're giving your opinion. You're supposed to be unbiased and all this. I'm just kind of like, uh, is he an AI guy? You know, I really don't want to see that story yeah. unfold. And I'm hoping that that's not it. But that would also explain some of the whole like feel of him in Hollywood and this romanticized idea of it that maybe he's been just downloaded with movies and that's why he's acting like, you know, a Hollywood detective eh, from back in the day <laughs> yeah. on Friday, that kind of thing. Okay, I have a message here to all television writers in the world. Stop writing about AI. AI is supposed to be the thing that we're all against here in the writing community because it's coming for all our jobs. So how about we just pretend that it doesn't exist. We stop writing about it. We stop having characters yep. who are influenced about it. Yeah. I just, I would not like the AI twist either. I just think it's a little bit too, I maybe it's just because I'm too saturated watching too many other things that are incorporating AI that yeah. it just, it doesn't feel that or original at this point. No. Okay, so... What's interesting about this show is that we have this stuff, which, you know, pun intended for your theory, is totally on another planet. And then we have this other stuff that's what's going on here with Olivia, with Clifford, with mm -hmm. Carmen, yep. what we have sort of learned about her disappearance. Like, this stuff could be on any detective show known to mankind, where it yep. seems like Olivia has gotten herself involved with trying to help these other people. You know, Mayor Melanie's got a role to play in this as well, and something seemingly has happened to Olivia. Is it directly connected to these other mm -hmm. people, or is this all just a misdirect? That's the thing. I mean, this the only person we have telling us the story at this point is Melanie, right? And she's yeah. involved in it. So how much of it is true where she's kind of given this story that, you know, Carmen was in trouble with Clifford and, you know, Olivia came over and found her dead. And so she killed Clifford and her and so she called Melanie and her and Melanie put Clifford in the trunk. And that's the last she saw of her. I was just like, okay, the story's really convenient. Yeah. Is this really what happened? I don't know. Because at the end, we saw Melanie over at Bernie's house. So who knows? I mean, they're still really tight. Are they together covering something up? It kind of feels like it. Uh, the, back in the, I think it was like episode one or episode yeah. two, we had Melanie repeating and parroting a story that Bernie was also telling Sugar. So who knows? It feels like there's a lot more going on. It feels to me like we're getting a story, but not the full story. Like, yeah. I don't necessarily think that Melanie is lying about some of these things, but I think she's <laughs> withholding information. And I, it feels pretty clear to me that other than James Cromwell, who, by the way, I'm still inherently suspicious of, even though he's not really involved in this episode, but nobody else in this family seems to be altogether eager to help Olivia, who is one of their own, which is mm -hmm. really, really bizarre, which makes me think, of course, that, okay, they're all in on this in some way, especially when you get around to good old Davy here. And by Davy, I mean, like, the worst human being possible, where they're talking up, like, his awards potential and how Melanie may be willing to do whatever she can to help cover up any bad stuff that's going to come out of through mm -hmm. all of this. So it seems like they are all focused on... Let's amplify his career, because mm -hmm. if we amplify his career, he gets award recognition. That helps all of us. We all have better careers and more money. So you guys are greedy. I think you're all selfish. I don't know how caring you really are about Olivia, if you do care about Melanie. I mean, Olivia, Melanie. Try to show it a little bit more mm -hmm. other than just telling some, like, rando story to Sugar that may or may not be true. Yeah, I still feel like this family is looking to get their hands on Olivia because she knows something deeper that happened to her mom, that the family was maybe involved in the car accident that killed her. And she's starting to find out a lot more than she should. And she's becoming a little more vocal about some stuff. And they're trying to find a way to silence her. So now that she's missing with all this information, I think that her grandfather's like, we need to just get her back here so we can deal with this however we have to. 
Now, I know we both said in our review of the first two episodes that we think that Olivia is alive. And I still feel like Olivia is alive. Do I think they're going to withhold her from us for a couple more (laughs) episodes? Sure. But I think this is where the fun challenge of this is going to come for Mr. How Do I Relate to Humans, John Sugar, is... How do you get somebody to talk when it feels like they are all pretty insulated and they're all pretty much in these sort of active communications with each other? And beyond all that, a lot of them know what he looks like. All of this. We saw one mm-hmm. connection in this episode in Charlie. Do you, do you have some other friends, Sugar? Do you have some other friends that you can throw in there to go undercover? Yeah, I know. Because at this point, it felt like the only person he was really having any sort of friendship with is Ruby, who seems to be his handler and a handler of a bunch of other aliens, spies, people reincarnated <laughs> yeah. from the dead. I mean, Davy's really digging into this. They, you know, Bernie has sent him on a mission to be like, find yeah. out whatever you can kind of thing. Let's just get him out of the way so we can actually deal with things. And he really is kind of digging in as like, oh, I think they're like, you know, a ring of spies that are all together working to do, you know, whatever good or bad or whatever they're doing. And it's just like, that just seems too obvious and too easy of an explanation. Okay. If Davey manages to figure out the truth here in episode four, (laughs) I'm going to be so mad because it's like, this guy, he's an actor. He's not, I'm not insulting actors here. I'm just saying he's not any more qualified to figure any of this out than me. That would be like saying, okay, I'm going to get in a car and head out to Arizona and I'm going to piece everything together and I don't even drive. So it's just like, I... I need there to be some credibility here into how yep. Ruby has like tied together this operation. I'm very curious to see if there's actually a mother out there because if he is say AI or an alien yep. or whatever, then is there actually any parents to be had? Is the yep. sister real? If this is, you know, someone who's been reincarnated yep. from the dead, you know, are these memories his or someone else's? Like, we know that he has this, like, box that looks like it's in some sort of alien ice or something <laughs> that he keeps, like, opening, injecting himself with. You know, is he injecting more memories? Is he injecting his human skin? Oh, this video's getting so weird, man. I'm so Let's sorry, do it. Everybody. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hired parents are going to be out there. There's going to be some, Davey's going to talk to some other people in the acting community oh my goodness. that the aliens or the Frankenstein monster research people have hired. I, listen, I know a lot of people are probably going to be very upset or concerned about a big twist. And, you know, you referenced the curse <laughs> earlier. The end of the curse sucked. And the reason the end of the curse sucked is just because they really just threw this twist in out of nowhere and it didn't pay anything else off to me. And I, I'm okay with the big twist if you can find a way to make it work within the fabric of the show mm-hmm. and have it so that it's actually useful to everything else that you're telling us. Not, hey, look how clever we are. It's up to you smart viewers to figure it out. It's like, okay, just don't Instead of just trying to be really smart, how about you just tell a complete story? And if you have some things that are up for interpretation, that's fine. Just don't have the whole thing up for interpretation. Okay, let's talk about Stallings. What are your feelings on Stallings? Because at the end of this episode, we saw Ruby deleting a bunch of stuff, you know, making this call, being like, ah, sugar getting too close to Stallings. What do you think the connection is with Ruby and Stallings. I've already said mine. I think that Stallings is on the bad alien side and that there's another project going on and Ruby is, you know, heading the the good humans and Vickers is handling the bad humans so that they can get like a full picture of how humans work. Okay. I, I wish I had the direct reference in my head because there's like three different things that are I'm screaming, but I can't figure out the exact name of them. But I have seen other shows and stuff before where... You have a situation like this where somebody may be compromising to the mission. And Mm -hmm. I feel like Stallings is compromising because he might be involved in John Sugar's actual pre-death past here. Mm -hmm. And when you Mm -hmm. inject these new memories into somebody or you're trying to rebirth them, Mm -hmm. you probably do so with this expectation that you're not going to run into any possible triggers along the way. But if Stallings presents 
this sort of trigger that it's something that could send Sugar back to his own past and have him sort of questioning himself. Mm -hmm. That takes him away from the job. That's not useful for almost any anybody. Like the real thing that keeps coming back to me time and time again is Ruby saying, you know, I'm not sure, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but I'm not sure this is the right job for you. And it's sort of yep. he's trying to warn him without actually pulling him away, which makes me yeah. think that he isn't quite aware of everything that is going on. So he may be told some things when it comes to his directive, but he's not being told everything. And it would make sense to me that some of his actual memories would be sort of the thing that they're kind of yanking away. Yeah, I mean, there's there was some talk in there about like, you know, is it time to let the others know what's going on? Just it feels like there's definitely some sort of hierarchy and what's going on in whatever organization this is and this weird party that Ruby had where it's like, oh, there's cake over here, but we're going to look through your whole life upstairs one on one. So uh, what is happening here? It's so weird. One other thing I did really like about this episode it was short, and I'm not saying good television always has to be short or whatever, but if you have a story that's only 32 minutes long, great. Don't cram it with a bunch of other stuff. It's like we got into this, we got out of it. Clearly, we had enough to talk about here for, you know, 20 plus minutes in a video. They they packed a lot in. It just felt very tight and very yeah. well put together. Yes, it really did. I, I found this episode moved at a better pace than the first two. Yeah, I'm I'm really into this show. Who knows? I, I might be like burning it with fire after this twist is revealed. I don't mind really crazy twists. Like it's like you said, the curse, like this twist at the end was like, look at us being clever. We're yeah. doing this twist to be so twisty. Look at we're so smart. And you'll never figure it out because we won't give you any reason to figure it out. So by the time it comes to the end, ha ha ha. Yeah. I can never really stand when there are shows that do that or movies that do that where it's just like you're not really along for the ride you're here for us to sort of drive you around in the clown car so at the end of it you're just like oh my goodness how amazing how smart you are i never would have figured it out i love shows that are more like this i think that they have given just enough for us to get to whatever crazy twist it is. If it's AI, they've given enough with that where they've talked about, you know, fe feelings, you know, AIs are not supposed to have feelings, you know, you're supposed to be objective, you know, AIs don't have that. The same with if it's an alien, oh, you know, it's our directive to observe people and not participate, you know, same sort of thing. Like they're there's enough here that you can figure it out. You know, oh, you're not being objective about the band, the UFOs. Like, if it turns out to be the UFOs, then we're like, okay, you guys gave enough. Yeah, I'm going to be happy if it's any of these things that have some sort of buildup in the show. I just hope that whatever it is, we still have the grounded nature of the, ca of the case. So yeah. we're not getting, like, completely <laughs> derailed. But we'll see what happens here. We still got a good bit left of the show. I am crossing my fingers that this doesn't just, like completely ruin everything well here's the thing is like if it has some crazy twist where it's like it's ai or yeah. it's aliens or it's you know sugar reincarnate from the dead how do you get season two like what <laughs> is the once you've got that big twist how do you like reach that bar going into another season like it really feels like it will be kind of wrapped up Maybe you just you do it like upload and you just like reboot him and you just have Rejon Sugar. Or two. if it's aliens, maybe the big giant head is going to come down and we're going to like, you know, see John Lithgow okay. as well. Also if... be like, all right, let's go, William Shatner. You can come over here and do this show too. If you guys want to make Sugar Season 2 with John Lithgow, I will pay for it myself. Okay, granted, I, I don't have any of the money, so this is a lie, but I will... I will do whatever. I will do anything. Give me John, John Lithgow <laughs> and Colin Farrell on screen together. Please and thank you. Okay. Listen, if this is Aliens, it could either go really poorly or really well. I mean, there's been a lot of really good alien-related theme stuff that has been really compelling. And, of course, there's lots of stuff that's campy. But so far, the show has been set up to be pretty serious. So yeah. if that is where they're going, there's... They can't bring in William Shatner as a big giant head. But if it is undead, I'm Rick Grimes. I'm here from oh, my own. The no. Walking Dead. Oh, the one goodness. to live is over. Now <laughs> Surprise! I'm it's another Walking Dead. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
the Apple TV part with the ruse. It's actually going to AMC from here on out. Okay, before we get any weirder, we'll we'll wrap this up. But you know, thank you guys for hanging out with us. You can check out our review for episodes one and two just by clicking that box right mm -hmm. there. Also, thank you to our patrons for your thank support. You. you can join our Patreon live streams over there every week. We'll see you guys here next time.